Hello, this is part two in looking at short run production of the firm. So the short run production function, or sometimes called total product of labor or total physical product of labor, can be written as the following. The quantity of output is a function of units of labor and k-bar, where k-bar is a fixed level of capital. This shows the quantity of output produced from a given quantity of the labor input holding capital fixed. So a short run production function or total product of labor function will tell us, for example, if we use 10 workers, we can produce 400 units of output. If we use 30 workers, maybe we can produce 900 units of output, and so on. Here's an example of a production function, and we're going to turn it into a short run production function. So the quantity of output equals 2 times units of capital times units of labor. And in the short run, we're going to assume capital is fixed. So capital is fixed in the short run. You can't vary it. It takes time to build a new plant. So we're going to plug 5 in for K. And simplifying, here is our short run production function. It shows us the relationship between units of labor and the quantity of output holding capital fixed, in this case holding capital fixed at 5. I could have used any other value here for k. Alright, some key concepts in the short run is average product of labor. This is going to be output per worker, the average units of output produced by a typical worker, and the formula for the average product of labor is going to be the quantity of output divided by the units of labor that produced that output. So with our production function, Q equals 10L, the average product of labor is going to be Q divided by L. And if we wanted to get the average product of labor function, well, what is Q? So in the numerator here, Q, well, Q is just a short run production function, or 10 times L. So 10 times L divided by L is our average product of labor. In this case, it's 10. So on average, each worker produces 10 units of output given this production function. So this is a very uh, special type of production function. Not all production functions will have such a simple average product of labor uh, relationship. Uh, just another example here. Um, if 10 workers produced 80 units of output, okay, this doesn't pertain to this particular, particular production function, but there's some other production function here. If 10 workers produced 80 units of output in a day, then average product is the amount of output divided by the 10 workers are 8. So on average, each worker produced 8 units of output. Moving on, the marginal product of labor. Marginal product of labor is the change in total output produced by using one more unit of labor. Here is the formula. It's the change in the quantity of output divided by the change in labor. So this is a slope concept, showing the change in one variable from a one unit change in another variable. And in terms of calculus, we can write it as a following, which just means it is a derivative of the short run production function with respect to labor, where the derivative of the short run production function is just a slope. So if this is our short run production function, the example we've been using, Q equals 10L, what is the slope of that or the derivative of that function? It's just 10. Every time we use one more worker, output rises by 10 units. So if we go from 1 to 2 workers, output goes from 10 to 20. When we go from 2 to 3 workers, total output goes from 20 to 30, another 10 unit increase. So every time we use one more worker with this simplified production function, the marginal product is 10. Output always increases by 10. And just again a reminder, the derivative, which is a slope function, uh, the derivative of the short run production function is the marginal product of labor. A little bit more about the marginal product of labor. If the marginal product of labor is positive, output increases by using one more unit of labor. So if the marginal product of labor is 10, if we were to use one more worker, marginal product would go up by 10. If the marginal product is 0, okay, using one more unit of labor, then in that case, um, 
output doesn't change. So if we hire another worker and that worker does not add to our production process by producing more units of output, it leaves our total output unchanged. And if the marginal product of labor is negative, it means that if we were to hire a worker and the marginal product of labor of that worker would be negative, that means our output would actually fall. We'd be losing output. In this case, our output would fall by three units, maybe going from 10 to seven, for example. And a little bit more about the marginal product of labor. If the marginal product of labor is positive and increasing, total output, the total physical product of labor is increasing at an increasing rate. So for example, if the marginal product of the third worker is four and the marginal product of the fourth worker is six, output is not only going up, but it's going up at a faster rate. It just didn't go up by four units or three units or two units by hiring the fourth worker. It went up by six units, which is more than when we hired the third worker. If the marginal product of labor is positive and decreasing, output is increasing at a decreasing rate. Okay, uh, short run production function is rising here as we add more units of labor, but it's rising at a diminishing or decreasing rate. So if the marginal product of labor of the 10th worker is three and the marginal product of labor of the 11th worker is one, yeah, hiring the 11th worker increased our output by one unit, but it was a lot less than the increase that we experienced under the 10th worker. So output is going up in smaller and smaller increments. Sometimes we'd call this diminishing returns. And in another video, I'll talk about the law of diminishing marginal product or the law of diminishing marginal returns. All right, uh, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found it helpful.